Hey guys, this is Aaron from Geek Element Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials where in this tutorial we're going to be talking about using variables in the Swift language. Many of you guys already know when Apple released the new versions of Xcode and the new iOS's for their devices along with it came a new secondary language we are now able to develop in and this language is called Swift. It's a part of the C language, very much like Objective-C, but it's meant to be a more simplified version of Objective-C as an overall. And it is said to eventually replace Objective-C as it's becoming a little bit outdated and the practices are getting a bit kind of too much to even develop an application. Now Swift, again, like I said before, now simplifies things so it's a little bit more easy and you know, we can create applications a lot faster. And with a new language comes new ways we need to learn to basically do stuff. And the great thing Apple have implemented is the playground. Now what the playground is, is basically almost like a blank canvas which we can just simply go crazy in. We can test out code and stuff like that and see how it works and just generally get a good feel to the language. So as you can see here, I have a playground um, window open up here. It's simply blank, there is nothing completely in it. So what we're going to be talking about is variables. Now the greatest thing about these variables in Swift is the way we define them. We no longer have to tell them like this variable is a string, da 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 da, or this variable is an int, da 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 da. We don't have to define what type of variable it is. The brilliant thing is it kind of understands itself what variable that is. So I'm going to space down here so you can clearly see. I'm going to type out the VAR for variable, short for, and what we simply do is create a few variables and then put them to work to basically display within a bigger string. So what I'm going to do now is simply name our first variable, which is going to be a basic a little profile about myself. So basically we're going to call the variable name, and it's going to equal our string, which my name would be Aaron. Now the best thing is, because it's equaling a string, it kind of knows that it's a string so then that variable called name is now a kind of string basically if we changed it to numbers like I had one two three it will completely change up the string altogether and then it will recognize itself as an int so it's very very clever how it can do stuff like this so again if I just go back to writing our string and as you see, as I type it out, and you can see it displays nicely on the right there, so it gives us like a, a live kind of preview of what is basically happening, which is, again, a brilliant thing. So what we're going to do is create a couple of these variables then. So I'm going to create another one now, and this will be, say, my gender. And obviously my gender is male. Uh, we're going to go for, actually, I'm going to put a capital on the name here to keep it all nice and line, a bit of OCD for you. Create another variable there, make sure the variable's lowercase, and now uh, we can have this one as my favourite colour, which happens to be, we get in the middle there, green, funnily enough. And then we create our fourth variable, which is going to be the final one, my favourite type of food, which that's going to simply equal a nice big juicy burger. So we have four variables there. Now each of them are basically strings as we've equaled them to a string or a piece of text. So they all know they are strings and when we work with them now, anything to do with strings, uh, if you refer back to any of these variables, they kind of work again with strings. So what we're going to do now is kind of combine them into an interpolation kind of um, format which is very new to Swift. And what this basically does is simplifies it and kind of shortens down the amount of code or the way we go about doing stuff to display it within our string. So what we're going to do is simply have a string that's simply going to take um, you know, parts of our four variables and place them within the string. So what I'm going to do is create again another variable and this one I'm going to simply call it add values as we're going to be adding some values of the variables in it and that's simply going to equal if I do our two quotation marks of our string here. So as you can see, it's very you know it's exactly the same as our previous four variables that we created to be with strings. What we're going to do now with this variable is implement our other variables in it. So as you can see on the right here, we have our kind of a live preview of all of our variables, and this is one here. It's simply blank. What we're going to do is do a kind of backslash there and our parentheses, and in between our parentheses, then is going to name one of our variables, which we're going to do our first one, which is name. 
Now, as you can see now, it's got a name in there, but in the live preview, it says the word Aaron, which is picking up the variable name, and because that's equal to our string of text, it will display that in case. Now, we're going to do Aaron likes to eat, and we're going to repeat the process for the name, our backslash and our parentheses there. Aaron likes to eat, and this time, I'm going to put in food. So no matter what the name is of our variable and what the food is, will be displayed within our string. So as you can see here now, it simply says Aaron likes to eat burger, which again, doesn't really sound right. So if we update our variable of burgers here, and let's do a burgers, there we go. You can see now that in our add values variable, the complete thing there, it kind of updates there. So why this is more simpler, well simplified than Objective-C or anything like that, is you can see here that we've got our variables within our string. Now normally we'd have to create an NS string, string and all that kind of stuff, then add them on the end and then link them up in the string, or maybe you have to do like, you know, our variables name, dot text or anything like that, with like, you know, add symbols and stuff like that just to add it in. It's very, very simple and really easy and just very, like, you know, it's just 100% a lot better, a lot more efficient and, again, a lot quicker to do. So what we're going to do then is an, um, kind of link up now some of our other variables. So if I just copy this line and then paste it in underneath, we need to change the, uh, the name of our variable here. So if I just change this to number 2 and then just get rid of the stuff in between. And this one we're going to do um, you know, revolving around the favourite colour. So if we do colour now, so it will basically say green. And if I just get rid of this bit here, green is and then the name which is my name green is Aaron again we can simply then do this on here instead of updating our variable so there's a possible way of doing that green is Aaron's fave color so you see as it updates there you can see how it is exactly working you know we can you know put space if we put a space after it'll create a space just after the Aaron there so you can see how it's all linking up and stuff like that so again, if I go to create a third one, and then change this one to three, and let's say we rolled around this one with, how about we stick them all in? Let's try and fit them all in as a whole. So I'm just gonna copy this here, and we're gonna go to the complete start. So what we're gonna do now then, um, name, which is Aaron, is a, put in gender, is a male, who likes to eat, paste that there and put in our food variable. So, so far we've got Aaron is a male who likes to eat burgers and, and likes the color, put in our color variable and I'll just drag this over now so you can clearly see it. So it's a pretty long one, we've fitted it all in but we've managed to implement four variables within our string. And it clearly says here, Aaron is a male who likes to eat burgers and likes the colour green. Which, that's as crazy as it may seem, that is amazing. Just how simplified we've actually made it. So that's working with strings, and now we're going to move on to variables within int, so we can work with numbers. So what we're going to do, so picture this if you've got a game. We got a variable here which gives us the score. And at the moment we've it's equal to let's say a thousand. So the score's a thousand. And you can see over here it's uh, written out or printed it as one thousand with a nice little comma in there, which is pretty cool. Again, we don't have to kind of set that ourselves. That's that's brilliant. So our score there is uh, a thousand. Then we're gonna have say like bonuses we had in the game. So maybe we have a variable that gives us time so you know maybe we um, got basically some power-ups or some stuff that kind of increases our score once we completed some bonuses so it's gonna times say let's equals 10 so our variable is called times we're not actually times it at the moment we'll do those calculations in a moment so we have another variable to divide and that's gonna divide by 5 uh, another variable, oh, make sure it's lowercase, a variable. This will be our add one. And this can simply equal, let's say 200. I'm just making these numbers completely up. And then we have our minus, which will equal, let's say, 50. 
Okay then, so we've got our variables there. Right, so picture this one. We've got a game and we've got our score. Our score's been set to a thousand, which we, um, you know, did in the thing, in the game. But while playing the game, we had a few bonuses. We've got some bonuses like, you know, we collected some extra unlockable stuff. Uh, maybe we lost a few lies, which will make us divide points. Uh, we did something else, like we got to a secret location or did, like, you know, dropped off a package gives us um, some extra points and maybe minus uh, we did something wrong say like you know we killed a civilian or anything like that and it minus some points so we got a load of stuff there a load of calculations that we can kind of add into the basic score of the game so then when the basically when the game's finished and then our scores then totaled up we'll have a variable and we call this finish score and that's simply going to equal again our string and we're simply going to have final score and our final score is basically our score so final score equals a thousand which you've linked up our int with it in our string which is again really really simple to do now when it comes to the you know stuff like calculations and stuff like that let's say I completely copied this whole line and paste it underneath and let's do we have to change the name of our variable so it doesn't conflict with our first one and this time our final score um, is our score minus or take away our minus basically any you know say we did like, I lost a few lives and it took this points at the end of the game and you can see minus equals 50 so score take away minus again equals 950 so it just prints it in there that was like a really simple calculation so again, if I copy this and paste it down for our third one, where this time we're going to get it to uh, say we got some bonuses this time. So we're going to do our asterisks and we want it to times by our times, making sure I've got the capital there, our times variable, which 1,000 times 10 is 10,000. And you get a simple calculation. It doesn't have to think twice. There's no additional things that you do. It's just simply getting our variable uh, what we want it to do versus our other variable, which is again really simple. So we paste in now our final, uh, well not our final one, sorry, this is our divide one now, so a score, uh, and this will be slash there, divided, make sure I change that up to number four, our uh, divide, again, gets our thousand score, divides it by five, which equals 200, and I believe this is our final one now for our minus, or we have minus there. Oh no, the one we're missing is add. Couldn't really see it there. So add that to add, and I'm going to change this to five. There we go. So our score, add our add variable, which is 200, and it gets 1,200. So you can see there how simple it is to kind of create variables and like you know define what they are, uh, what values they have, and how to work with the values within the variable. Whether it's just displaying text within a label or within the string. Again, same going for displaying the you know the in the ints of the numbers within strings, and even kind of you know doing calculations, working stuff out adding them together and not having an output you can see all on the right hand side here everything that is basically um, printing to you. it's like a live preview so you know a massive massive improvement on objective c and as you can see again it's a lot simpler to work with swift so again that's simply how you can use variables within the language of swift Hey guys, just before we click off this video, I have a few more bits of information that I'd love to share with you. But just before I do, if this tutorial helped you in any way, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't, make sure you subscribe and follow us on social media. All the links will be in the description below. If you want more up-to-date and in-depth tutorials on iOS 8, Xcode 6 and the Swift language, then make sure you guys enroll in our complete iOS 8 and Xcode 6 course the links will be in the description below. And if you guys want to learn on the go, make sure you download our Xcode tutorial application from the App Store where you can get much more than what we offer on YouTube. Again, links to this will be in the description below. And if you guys want to kick back and blow off a bit of steam, make sure you go check out my gaming channel where we have a lot of fun, play with a lot of friends and generally just have a good time. So make sure again you go subscribe to that channel. But once more, I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.